Podcasters Roundtable, round 45, when numbers level off. What's that mean? We'll find out. But first step first, after you listen to this round, of course, or maybe even on your app. If you're listening to the audio only version, check the show notes on the app. Hopefully there's a link right there. It'll take you to Podcasters Roundtable, or you can go to podcastersroundtable.com slash guest. And that is a way to put your name in the pool, to get on the show and be an actual roundtabler. We have to, com- we have to completely... Uh, refresh the roundtable every time. That's the hope with new roundtablers and and get your experience in here. So check that out. Do that. And you'll also uh, get updates. And uh, I didn't send one out for today's show. but uh, So not always reliable. You should probably circle me or Daniel or Dave or anyone on the roundtable. Circle on Google Plus and uh, hopefully you'll be plugged in. So thanks for showing up in the chat. Looks like we got a good contingent of uh, roundtablers in the live you know, in the live hangout, that's for sure. And in the chat as well. So I'm looking forward to pulling some good participation, uh, feedback from the chat. So I will say, well, first of all, I want to thank uh, Jeffrey powers. He is, uh, the lead man at the podcasters community, uh, started that up over at Google plus, And that's where a lot of ideas, um, a lot of feedback certainly for podcasters can come from. So if you're not in the podcasters community at Google plus get over there, and uh, join that. And uh, Jeffrey posted his question of the day, which he obviously does often. I don't know if it's every day, but it, there is a question of the day most of the time. Uh, yeah, basically, it's it's. Uh, I try and put a little bit of spacing in between it so that people understand that uh, there something new will show up. And so it, it's just one of those tricks that you you get forum people to uh, to go to come to your forum by keeping things interactive. Gotcha. Yeah. So Jeffrey posted a question. It was podcast stagnation. He said, what do you do when your numbers start to plateau? Do you take to social media and send out more posts? Do you run a contest? Uh, Do you do something silly? So there was some good interaction on this and I was looking for a topic and I said, well, let me just toss it out there. Sorry to hijack the uh, the post there. Jeffrey, you can delete all that if you want. Uh, I said, does anyone who is given feedback on this post want to... uh, want to have this as a round table. And I think almost everybody said they were able to a couple guys. I think I have a couple quotes here from them. Uh, couldn't make it, but, uh, yeah. So that's how this round table came together. And that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, when the numbers, if you look at your stats, uh, most podcasters will see a point where the numbers just sort of, you know, they rise up and then they kind of just sit in one spot for a while. And we're going to talk about, uh, what, these round tablers or what these podcasters do if they even notice that some people may not even look at their stats it may not matter to you so and we're going to try to branch off and find out if that brings up other issues as well but let's introduce the round table all the way down on the end my left the way i'm looking at it right now uh christopher brand new round tabler welcome to the round table well thank you for having me and Christopher, how do, you, what do you, how do you say your last name there? And where can we well, find, where, where are you actually coming to us from? Okay, I'm Christopher Grunlin, and the last name, it, just pretend there are two U's instead of the O. I do a weekly show out of Dallas with a friend called Men in Gorilla Suits, which is sort of a philosophical look at pop culture. And the very first podcast I did was just podcasting my very first novel. There's a link on Men in Gorilla Suits in the sidebar if you feel like listening to a novel. Awesome. And we're going to find out that Christopher, he just doesn't care about his podcast. That's what he's here to talk about today. (laughs) Just kidding. Teasing him. Kind of. (laughs) Perfect. Perfect. We we don't want the same opinion. So uh, next to him, another new roundtable. I'm pretty sure, Craig, you have not been on the roundtable, right? No, I haven't. This is my first time and I'm very happy to be here. Uh, Mm -hmm. My name's Craig, um, podcasting out of Valencia in Spain. And our podcast helps Spanish speakers improve their English. That's uh, that's what we do. Very um, cool. Yeah. Very cool. We got the international uh, representative here today, so we are we are rolling on uh, almost going on all cylinders. We don't have we don't have a woman on the roundtable today. I do need to get another woman on here and uh, and balance this thing out again. But we will do that very soon. And uh, yeah, awesome. Well, Daniel, co-host, welcome back to the roundtable. Thank you very much. I'm Daniel J. Lewis from the Audacity to podcast.com. And I'll put something out there that we'll discuss later. I've seen a podcast of mine decrease by like a third of its audience. So I'm looking right. forward to talking about that. All right. We're going to find out what Daniel's doing about that. If anything, he probably doesn't care. Yeah, right. And uh, <laughs> other roundtabler 
co-hosts sitting right next to each other. How cute. Dave, welcome back to the roundtable. It's nice to be back. Glad I'm not driving like a maniac on the way home from uh, Michigan like last week, but uh, glad to be here. Dave Jackson from the uh, schoolofpodcasting.com. That sounds like a classic rock song, driving back from Michigan like a maniac. That's <laughs> right. Um, Some old Springsteen song. Driving yeah. home from Michigan. <laughs> driving home for Christmas. Where's that guitar, Dave? Where's that guitar? <laughs> That's all right. Don't, 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 run, no. don't run for it. All right, returning roundtabler <laughs> and uh, feature guest, I guess you could say, today because it is based on the question he asked on the podcast community, podcasters community. Jeffrey, welcome back. Thank you. Uh, Jeffrey Powers, uh, geekazine.com, howtorecordpodcast.com, where I have a new feature going on on the show called Podcast Hacks, uh, little two-minute videos on different uh, hacks, uh, things you could do to, uh, to make your podcast go a little bit smoother. Awesome. So that's not profiling Dave, Daniel, and myself podcast hacks <laughs> yeah. no no you okay. guys are you guys are below hack oh good thank you i sure. uh, something to achieve something to reach for goals i like it all right and welcome back max flight to the round table hi thanks for uh, asking me back uh i'm max flight been podcasting since 2008 with the airplane geeks podcast and on the advice of you ray i started a couple other podcasts one of them didn't survive and two others do the the uav digest is a podcast about drones and then there's the super niche pax x podcast which will only mean something to those in that niche very cool and that could be very interesting to this discussion right i'm sure you've probably maybe reached that niche and uh maybe i don't know well, we're going to talk about that so uh, before i get into right. that let's just launch it off with i guess a simple question and i'm just curious do you even check your stats? Uh, Jeffrey, I'll toss this to you since you opened up the, the question here. Do you even check your stats? How many shows do you have, and do you check your stats? <laughs> um, well, right now I have the Geek Smack Review, uh, which is the main podcast. I have uh, Day in Tech History, which is the daily podcast that's been going every single day since uh, August 9th of 2010, 2009, hit its 2000th episode back uh, last month. Um, and then uh, uh, Wearable Today, which is a weekly show that I do with a co-host, uh, and that's it right now. I've kind of uh, taken a couple offline, and I'm planning on retooling them. Um, do I look at my stats? Uh, yes, actually, I do. Um, I Most of my stats go through, uh, well, I, I have part of my shows are on Lib Libsyn. Uh, I also use uh, Blueberry Stats or Tech Podcast Stats, and I definitely uh, take those stats. And uh, uh, they, they have, like, the email option where I can, every Sunday, I can look at them uh, while I'm waking up and seeing how things are going or just go over there and take a look. Is that is that a special? I don't even know about that option. I'm on Libsyn. Or is that Blueberry? The That's email? Blueberry. That's the oh, Blueberry. Okay. That yeah. makes sense. I was like, I'm missing something. Then I like that. Although, I don't know. Do you then feel like a slave to your stats? Does anyone else get their stats emailed to them, Daniel? I used to. Um, not for my... Uh, podcast stats though anymore and I'm trying to limit how much stuff comes in through email I have a different system for checking my stats so you do check stats I do so what I do is this is part of my morning routine that I do check my stats every day I don't obsess over them and actually I don't really pay attention to the number itself I'm looking for directions for patterns for spikes for something that really stands out to me over a long term, over short term, but not really paying attention to the exact number. So what I do is I have all of my stats services for everything, including affiliate stats, all in a folder of bookmarks in my browser in Chrome. And I right click on that. It's actually in my toolbar. I right click on that and click open tabs or open all links in new window, something like that. So it opens 50 tabs at a time, which really puts my computer to a stressing point. And I just tab through, just looking for anything noticeable. That's my Google Analytics, my Blueberry stats, my Libsyn stats, my iTunes stats, my um, other stats that are important, my affiliate stats. So I am checking them every day. And sometimes I do pay attention to the number and it will surprise me because it's been a while since I've paid attention to the number. So I just suddenly think, oh, that, that seems higher than I remember it being and yeah. then i see what's well, sustained growth over time or in one case 
its sustained decrease over time. Cool. Well, keep that in mind. I'm curious to hear a little bit more about, you know, sort of the trends when you're looking at, at trends instead of just sort of, did I get 20 more on this episode than the last episode? So maybe bigger picture, that might be something, something cool to talk about. Now, Christopher, in the end, we know you don't look at stats. Well, I do look at stats ah. once a week when I do upload a new episode, just because it's right there. We use Libsyn for our storage. Um, with the other podcast, the very first podcast I did was the novel, and that's kind of a unique thing because once you're done with the chap, you know, the novel, it's just out there. So it's not something that I really felt much of a need to go and check those stats until um, when I was at Podcast Movement and Evo Taro's like, you've got to, sit, you know, you've got to have this novel on patio books. So I do check the patio book stats just because. You know, they're kind of cool looking, and I usually, on my old site, get about 300 listens a month on patio books. I get about 3,000, mm. and I'm kind of like Daniel with that. It's kind of cool to see, but it's mostly the trend. And with men in gorilla suits, since it's more of a hobby thing with a friend who's kind of even worse than me about caring about stats like that with something that's a hobby, I, I really only check when... I load a new episode, and occasionally when we're recording, if he's over here, I might show him the stats, or if there's something that's kind of weird, like next to the U.S., the next biggest country is the Netherlands. So I'm just like, for some reason, over Canada, England, other places, people in the Netherlands are listening to us. Huge in the Netherlands. Jeffrey, you giggled I say huge. mentioning something. <laughs> oh, I, I giggled because of the fact that uh, Evo uh, promoted patio books, which Evo owns patio books. So. Well, yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was just really funny. Uh, really quick, uh, one the biggest reason I check my stats is because of the Day in Tech History podcast. If there is an episode that doesn't get out, I need to know about it uh, because, you know, that the, having 2,000 shows on a daily basis, kind of is a, kind of is something that that nobody really does. So I want to make sure that it, it comes out within that 24-hour period. And there's been times where I've found that it didn't, uh, WordPress didn't uh, publish or something like that, and I had to go back and and uh, and fix it. Terrible WordPress, terrible. What can you do? <laughs> that's, that's a whole other round. What can you do? So Max. Do you check your stats? Yeah, uh, hardly ever uh, these days. I, I think you know, in the first year or two, maybe of starting a new podcast, uh, yes, uh, and, and certainly for the first podcast every day. But after a while, you know, you you have that feedback and you know where it's going. And uh, like with Daniel, I think that you know the direction is more important than than the absolute levels because. Well, I, I don't think the absolute levels really mean that much because uh, it, it's this is a really hard thing to measure. Uh, some people do it better than others, but you know, in the end, if it's a subscriber or a listener, or, yeah, you just don't really know. Uh, so I, I, I tend to not, but I do look at them if I make some kind of a change, a significant change, not a a change for an episode, but some kind of a change in the in podcast as a, as a whole or, or some new direction or something like that, then I will watch it for a little while to see if it achieved the results I was looking for, and then I you know, start to ignore it again. Yeah, no, that's a good one because you're saying that you make a change, and that might not be based on reaching a plateau. You may just, maybe it's based on listener feedback or an idea you had, so keep that in mind. Right. I'm curious as we get down the road here how you've done that and how you've seen how the, the stats have sort of either gone up, down, stayed the same, whatever. So that's probably some good experience in there. Um, Dave, certainly you've been podcasting long enough to see <laughs> one of your shows stagnate, right? Or what would, here's a good question. What are we qualifying as stagnating? That's a good question. Cause when you, the more you get, the more downloads, you can vary a couple of hundred downloads you know, if you're up over a thousand, you you vary a couple hundred, and it it doesn't really look like it's moving a whole lot. Depending on you know what scale you're zoomed in and things of that nature. Um, so yeah, I mean, I check mine stats kind of. Uh, I think it was Christopher said it. he checks them when he uploads them. I just started doing something this year where I go into my lips and stats and I add up the last the the downloads for the last four episodes, 
and I put that into, so I'm, I'm checking basically the last four and adding those up. And at first, at the beginning of the year, there was a, a, a pretty decent uptick, but now it's like it's February, and I'm, I'm, it is. It's kind of level, and again, if, if you're varying, you know, 5 10% of your audience, it doesn't really make that much of a dip. But yeah, most of mine are, you know, I really miss the days. That's that's one advantage of, of you know, the whole back in the day thing. I mean, at the beginning, everybody's stats looked like a hockey stick. Right. It was just going crazy. Um, you know, but um, I, I to me, I'd rather judge now, like, how many emails am I getting from people? That actually has gone up much more than, than my stats probably have. And to me, I think that's probably more important. So interaction. Just kind of a measure of engagement. Yeah. yeah. Engagement. Good, good, uh, good keyword there. So, I mean, I'm still curious, stagnation. I mean, what would you consider, you know, what would you consider your show? But Jeffrey, when you say stagnation, what do you, what does that really mean? Uh, mostly when, uh, when your show plateaus, when uh, you're, you're looking at the stats and, and you're seeing a constant number uh, hover around maybe a plus minus 20 or something like that. Um, Would that be how many weeks out? Like you know, what I mean, because in the shows, the back catalog always tends to grow, right? Right. So we t we're talking like four weeks out, maybe or something, and you're oh, seeing I sort would, of. I would judge it more on three month periods. Hmm. Uh, what happens on three month periods? Because one of the things that we found as podcasters is it really is the the time of the year where podcasts listen. I mean, uh, it, most of you probably in the month of December saw your numbers go up, and then just oh, really? in January they kind of fell down a little bit. Yours went down? Mine, every December, uh, mine go down, and, and it's noticeable, and it's very consistent year to year. There's, there's some interesting seasonality in there that I haven't quite figured out, but yeah, December's always a down month for me. At work, we deal with this, and we have schools in, schools out, numbers up, numbers down, but it's consistent, so we can tell what it is. Yeah, so if you, if you block them in a three-month period, you can kind of get an idea as to uh, what you did last year as opposed to what you did this year. And, and go from there. Cool. So, Daniel, have you seen one of your shows sort of level off? I mean, you have one show. You've got the one show, which is just probably exploded. But even something that is really popular like that, have you seen that level off? Or does it continue to grow faster than you would consider sort of reaching a plateau? Well, first of all, which show is it that you're saying you think exploded? The once. <laughs> Isn't your once upon a time pod, fan podcast, the one you always sort of put out there is like a lot of people listen to this, right? Well, that is my most popular show, but that's the one that went down, mm -hmm. actually. And that ties into the content that's in it, not because of our approach necessarily, but the show itself, the TV show that we're doing a fan podcast about, got less popular. And it had a great first season and had a really rough second season. And that affected us. It affected all of the other Once Upon a Time podcasters that I've heard from that they said, yeah, their stats were going down as well. And I was looking at it. And in our first year, it was our first two years, even it was really easy to hit 6,000 or so downloads within about a month. Now it's closer to three or 4,000. So it's been going down. And also we see that in the feedback we receive. We see that in the interaction on the website as well. And I think that's because people are losing interest in the TV show. It's in its fourth season. Some people are feeling like certain things are too much of a stretch. Now the show might not be as good as it used to be. These are thoughts that people are probably thinking. So they end up giving up on the extracurricular stuff that supports the TV show they're no longer as passionate about. Snow White jumped the shark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, plus, I, I remember reading, uh, and I haven't checked the, those uh, numbers yet, but uh, Once Upon a Time still on the chopping block uh, for not getting renewed, right? Uh, they don't know yet. The, fourth, the second half of the fourth season is about to come back, and it had a pretty good fourth season so far, and I'm trying to get to that in my stats to see. I think we did pick up um, more audience from last year, um, the 2013-2014 TV season, to this year, but there was that big drop, so we're now a much smaller group. But I feel like it's a more tightly knit group now than it was when we first started. Like we're getting more donations now with a smaller audience than we were when we had a much bigger audience. And I think the quality of relationships being built among our community is stronger now 
than back when we had a much bigger audience as well. So no change because you're seeing it go down. You're attributing it to something that's sort of just natural, right? I mean, the show's losing popularity and you actually, you're feeling stronger community. So it's not likely that you're going to make a change. I don't, or what kind of change might you make? Well, the kind of change that I would want to make, and this is something I've been trying to work on, is do more in other communities. Again, that was something I was very heavily involved with when I first launched the show, Part participate in other places, talking about Once Upon a Time. So then they would welcome if I shared my podcast episode there. I don't do that so much now because of time. Uh, the other thing I think could bring more attention to us would be trying to interview some of the cast members and getting that celebrity attention and getting our guests then to tweet about us, share us on their Facebook page and such. And I think that would help bring a big boost to the show again. But I want to do that for the sake of improving the experience to our audience, not just what can we do to grow and make these numbers jump back up, but just, hey, let's do something awesome. Yeah, and so Craig, with your show, um, in the comments for the, the uh, on Google+, Plus. You're saying that you might seek out some marketing podcasts. Have you seen numbers in your show sort of hit a spot and stay there? I've seen them really rise the last year or so. I used to be like uh, Christopher. I used to check my stats when I went into Libsyn to upload an episode. But I know two things happened. I started podcasting with a co-host, and I started two other shows based around the same niche of teaching English, and I'm sure the, stat, the stats just, just shoot up. So then I started going in with that interest of the rising stats to see, to see what's going on. And as Jeffrey said, I noticed a drop. Like in November, they were, they were pretty high, and then over the holiday period, over Christmas and the New Year, they dropped. So that made me curious as to what's going on. And they've kind of plateaued since then, so they're, they're not going anywhere. They're kind of holding around about four or five uh, thousand a month um, and they're, they're not moving up anymore so I'm wondering why hmm so how you know, that's a good question right so if you do see your your podcast <clears throat> rise and sort of hit a number and stay there and stay there how do we how do we figure out why that's happening Dave do you have an approach for figuring out why the heck I can't reach any more people that is that's the key because that's where a lot of us are um, and I think I'm, I'm going to quote the great Lou Mangello from WDW Radio that said we, we kind of go out so far, we're looking for, like, where's my crowd so I can find them and say, come hither. And his strategy, and I'm like, you know what, I think I'm going to try that, is instead of going out, in some cases, and just striking out, not finding anybody, he's going to where his audience is. Like, he's interacting with those people and turning those into super fans because the probably one of the, the top two, top three ways people are knowing, you know, getting to find podcasts is because somebody says, I heard this on a podcast. You got to listen to this. It's awesome. And so his philosophy is to, you know, um, like when you have a fire, right? When you blow on the fire, it bursts into flame. So he's focusing on what he has and letting those people go out and tell other people. It's, it's rough any way you slice it. Because you, you kind of go, okay, there's three, what, billion people in the world, and, and I've got, you know, whatever, 600 a week. <laughs> Where's the other 2.9 billion? It's like, come on, people. Well, I mean, Dave, you talk about the power of podcasting. And what I think is funny is I think most of us, I think podcasters in general, one of the powers of pod is is the niche, right? So what's it mean to be niche? When When are we happy that we've reached our niche? Niche sort of implies that maybe there's 2,000 people who are interested in this content. Of course, there are always more. There's always someone out there who's not listening that would enjoy your content. But, you know, I think doesn't good content always grow? I mean, you'll eventually find those people. You pick them up one. Uh, Max maybe thinks good content maybe doesn't always grow. Well, I've got a, this is kind of a case study that sort of touches on some of these points. And uh, I, I went and looked in my Libsyn stats and I plotted a chart of monthly downloads for like the past, uh, past uh, five years or so. And if you go, uh, you know, uh, after that initial hockey stick, that growth period, I had reached a plateau. I mean, we were looking at about, uh, it's between 20 and 25,000 downloads uh, per month. And then what we did, and we didn't do this because we were trying to grow, <laughs> grow the audience, but we had some, uh, some executives from a, uh, an association that has 
uh, about 400,000 members in the United States, and we had some of them on as guests, and we actually had the president of the organization on as a guest as well. Well, during those few episodes where we had those guys on, the numbers went from 20 to 25,000 downloads per month to right around 45,000 downloads per month. Did the, asso- did, did the association share it? Was that the primary reason? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so this, this association was in our niche, in our aviation niche, but we weren't reaching them. And when we had their leadership team involved in the show, and of course they promoted it internally into their membership, uh, that brought in a huge uh, influx of, of, of members. Uh, after that bump up to, to forty to 45,000, it, it dropped back down and le- leveled off at about, oh, it looks like at about 35,000. So there was a, you know, a bump up of new listeners. Uh, some of them stayed with us. A lot of them stayed with us. Uh, some of them didn't. But it, it was a step change. It generated a new plateau at a higher level. So I figured it out. I know exactly what happens. You hit a plateau, you Twitter bomb, and you get new and noteworthy, and you have a whole new audience. <laughs> well, this has been a great yeah, roundtable. Wow. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Go get your show in new and noteworthy right away. Gary Fawcett uh, asked a great question. He said, wouldn't every audience have a limited number? Maybe you guys have reached all of them. Remember, yeah. most podcasts are aimed at niche audiences. But in my well, case, we thought we had niche stars. We, we thought we had reached ours, and what we discovered from you know, this, this experience was that, you no, know, we hadn't reached ours. There were more of them out there that we didn't know about. So, that, I mean, that was kind of the part of the lesson is to kind of think expansively and, and try to ask yourself, you know, where are other folks in this niche who would be interested in your content that you're not finding, that you're not reaching? Yeah, and, totally, and new people find podcasts every day, right? So podcasts continues to grow. And um, mm-hmm. Jeffrey, get back to you. Craig, uh, Craig, you had something to say. Yeah, I was just going to say that I think it might have something to do with general awareness of podcasting because in, in my niche of language teaching, especially to Spanish speakers, you've got all of Spain, you've got Central and South America. You've got, but, I mean, there aren't that many good quality language podcasts out there for Spanish speakers. So I think the market's huge. It's just getting to the people. And maybe part of the reason I'm, I'm not reaching these people is because of the awareness. That, there isn't that awareness there of podcasting. I don't know. Jeff, but there's, def- there's definitely people out there. That's why I was thinking, too, because it's, we may reach a saturation of people who listen to podcasts exactly. who are interested in this topic. But like for Once Upon a Time, for example – it's not limited to only about four or 6,000 people who watch the TV show. Hundreds of thousands, millions, I think, watch the TV show. So my potential audience is millions of people. I just need to get them into the area of podcasting in order to grow the audience. So maybe we need to start reaching outside of podcast listeners and find people to introduce them to podcasting, like on National Podcast Day. <laughs> International Podcast Day. International Podcast Day. Nice. Jeffrey, what were you going to say? Well, first of all, Craig, I've, I, I was in Barcelona a couple months ago, and, and Spain's an awesome place. I'm, I'm glad I, I got to check that out, and, uh, and I got to check out some of the podcasting uh, stuff that was out there. That, that, with that said, I, I, I want to kind of put the numbers down. In the United States, there's 318 million people. In the world, there's 7 billion people. And it's always that story. You build something you, and, and you maintain it, and then the day that it closes, somebody passes by and, and goes, oh, I could have went there. I could have saw myself going on there. She closed down a podcast. Oh, you guys had a podcast? Oh, I would have listened to that. It's, it's <laughs> always, you're always going to find the audience post-haste, and, uh, and, and that's, you know, that's just a part of life. There's always going to be somebody that isn't in the know. There's always going to be somebody that doesn't know that uh, – that uh, Paul McCartney was not discovered by Kanye West. There's always going to be what? Uh, yeah, there's, <laughs> true. there's always going to be people that that just don't get it, and then they, they finally get it, and it's 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 after the fact. Now with the Day in Tech History podcast, what was really interesting was I thought I hit my plateau, and then one day I uh, and it was just six months ago uh, I was I was thinking, well, what do I do to make it more exciting? Because this is a niche podcast. Um, this is for IT professionals to listen to what happened in tech history that day, um, and it's a daily basis. So I kind of, I kind of fight my podcast with its uh, with itself because they can't, they're not listening Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They'll catch an episode here or there, but then about six months ago, my numbers doubled, 
and I still can't figure out why they doubled, but they doubled. So either somebody put me on some website somewhere, or or there's more IT professionals out there that I that I don't know of. There's always going to be somebody new. That's the bottom line. The, yeah. The... So does this create a, an extra stress for, for podcasters with potentially with infinite numbers of listeners? I'm including uh, extraterrestrial life. It's out there. Podcast is beaming. <laughs> Actually, this isn't radio, so they can get it. I'm sure they have the internet. So you have limitless potential to reach. How do you decide to focus on like Daniel? I mean, you know the audience for once in terms of TV ratings. How much do you focus on finding those people? And then like Dave sort of talks about focusing on the content and the people who have already found you, right? I mean, because we have only so much time. Uh, most of us probably are not getting, making a full-time income from our podcast. So it's a full-time job already to run a podcast. So how do you decide? Uh, if you do see those numbers, do you try to chase chase the dragon and go after those those other people who aren't... Uh, who aren't listening yet, or do you do you sort of hunker down and just focus on who's already there? I, th I would say just focus on making your podcast better because mm -hmm. it could be that people left because maybe the podcast wasn't that good, and making it better isn't going to bring them back. How do Keep we that find that out? Like, I mean, I, I'm sort of leading. It seems like the obvious question is to ask, but anyone here on this panel, how do you find out from your audience? What's going good? What's going bad? What should be different? Survey. Dave, 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 Dave spoke recently about a, a survey. Dave, a few uh, episodes ago, you spoke about different ways of surveying your audience and getting some feedback from them. Yeah, poll like daddy is, great idea. is yeah. the bomb. Uh, survey monkey is cool, but it sounds weird. You can only have 100 responses, and you'll be lucky if you get that. But poll daddy is owned by uh, WordPress. Um, the only disadvantage, unless you want to put out 200 bucks a year, is you can't download and like crunch the numbers in an Excel spreadsheet, but um, yeah, I was amazed at the uh, the different things. Like I was, I asked them about my length, and I I always feel like the podcast is too long because I mean, an hour Dave is a lot of Dave, and I was like, no, no, don't change it, it's good, you know. I was like, don't really? Such thing is too, too much, Dave. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not sure uh, that's true because he did put in the chat room that he's going to lose his pants in the next show. That's well, too much, Dave. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, you got to ask, and you know, it's one of the things uh, Michael Hyatt used to do. This he would end his show uh, back when he had comments. You know, leave your answer in the in the comments, and I think you don't ask, you don't get. Hmm. Yeah, we ran a survey. Yeah, there's a we lot got about 300 there. responses. Yeah. That's the thing that's that's disappointing is you're going to get about three percent of your audience it's if small. you're lucky that responds. Yeah, um, and that's going to be your your diehard fans, which is kind of good because those are the people that are again are going to go out and tell people. But uh, you know, go out and ask. And and then there is that um, depending like the weekly web tool show I do. That's just me. I found some cool stuff. I'm going to tell you about it. If you like it, here it is. Uh, enough people use my affiliate links to pay for my hosting. I could care. I mean, I, I don't care. It's not that I don't care, but that's a show that I would do for free. Mm -hmm. so, well, well what do we know about turnover, right? Well, we talk about reaching a plateau. A plateau is the net of new listeners who are coming in and listeners you used to have who've left. And uh, do we have any measures for that? Any way of uh, estimating that oh, kind I of wish. thing? Because if you think, I, I don't know about you guys, I've unsubscribed from more podcasts in 2015 than I have in a long time that it just was like, you know what? I'm just not getting anything out of this. Um, to me, I, I have a new uh, a new bar. Have you guys ever seen the app Shazam? I know I'm really late to the party on this. Yeah. yeah. But I'd heard about it forever. And my wife and I were out to dinner, and she goes, oh, I've heard this song. Who does? I said, hold on a second. I downloaded Shazam, and in like 10 seconds I had the answer. And I was to actually hear about it but then actually do it. I was like, this is, and every time a song came on, I was like, I got to see this work again. And to me, I'm like, okay, I need to present, I need to present kind of Shazam content that people are like, I got to hear the next episode. And that's just hard to do. But yeah. that's, you're going to find out by asking people and, and getting their feedback and things like that. But that's, you know, if you want to foster that word of mouth, Shazam, baby. Imagine how many people. When Shazam came out, is they're like, that's a weird name. Where would you ever yeah. do something like that? No clue that that was ever. Yeah. from a cartoon or something. So I, I hate that thing. I used to do a pub quiz here in Valencia and I used to play 10 songs and the idea was to write down the artist and the, and they just used to Shazam it and get 10 out of 10 every time. 
<laughs> if you get caught, it's over. That's right. So has anyone here made a change as a result of looking at stats? Hmm. I'm kind of in the middle of making a change for one of my shows. It's my clean comedy podcast where um, I just looked at the stats and actually I'm amazed at a few years ago. Uh, they really jumped up, but it's been kind of dropping a little since then. And it's not that I want to try and boost the stats, but I am curious what this change will make. My clean comedy show has been a weekly audio podcast where we would tell stories about being like amateurs at life and funny things that happen, share feedback from our listeners. It's not necessarily an original idea. I thought it was when I made it, but it wasn't. What we're transitioning to now is we're actually going to switch to doing a seasonal video podcast that will be sometimes a dramatized thing. Sometimes it will be a short snippet of some comedy. Sometimes it will be us telling a story. It'll be several different things, but switching to video. And I'm really eager. We haven't launched the video yet, but we did announce that the audio was retired after three seasons and 200 episodes. I'm really eager to see how that changes because I know it will change our stats. I just really wonder how. I'm already expecting I'll see a drop in the stats because people are used to downloading audio and then when video starts coming through on the feed instead, that'll probably change the download somewhat. So well, I know I it'll go down. That's going to go to YouTube as well. So that's going to, I mean, yeah. that really kind of factors in your stats, right? I mean, it, that, I guess the other question is, what do we what qualifies as a stat right it's pretty much anywhere your content is viewed i would personally that's how i would measure it i don't know about you guys if if somebody watches it and how long they watch it for that's yes. i think that's a stat interesting about the the how long right so that matters to you jeffrey oh yeah definitely i mean if if they're only listening for the first 10 seconds and and flipping over to something else it's it uh, and I'm not getting my point across, and what's what's the point? Now, you're getting that from YouTube, not obviously not from, like, Libsyn or Blueberry. Yeah, uh, I, don't think, uh, I don't think they have any stats like that. Stitcher. Unless, Stitcher does have some stats like that, yes. Um, but I haven't been checking Stitcher too much lately, and which is kind of a bad thing because they got some pretty spot-on numbers when it comes to that. Interesting. Yeah, they, you know, I guess that's another good question, too, is, um, you know, tracking stats can be kind of difficult, especially when you're spread across a lot of different places, right? Do you guys have a system for pooling your stats or do you only use like, I just check my blueberry stats? I just check Libsyn. I just go into Libsyn and look at their stats, but I'm curious what it, you hear people on the feed, you hear Rob and, and Elsie talking about stats addicts. What, what's a stats addict? I'm checking uh, mine like two or three times a week. Probably getting your email stats every day and you open checking every tabs day. and oh, you okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I mean I think it's I think it's pretty easy to figure out because we're probably were oh, all of us were stat addicts when we launched our show. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, it was it's the blast. When I f launched my first podcast and I could see stats, mm -hmm. uh, you're in there all the time. It's like you have you have time for it. It's new. You want to know yeah. is anyone listening? I, you know, and I think it's important. I think it keeps you going. You know, not to obsess on it, but to see growth helps. You know, so I think we're we I think we've all been there. Even me, even Chris, who doesn't <laughs> care. Even me, I, you know, <laughs> exactly. I mean, when I jumped over to Patio Books with Hell Comes with Wood Panel Doors, I checked the stats, especially because you know they were the first week or two. I mean, they were just phenomenal. I couldn't believe it, and. Even now, it's still about ten times more than the site where the novel, you know, where it originally was. Still, you know, it's much better. So I do check, but you know, we're talking about plateauing. Once I saw with Men in Gorilla Suits and even with Hell Comes with Wood Panel Doors on Patio Books that it plateaued, I just kind of stopped and I started kind of what um, Daniel was talking about. You know, at some point you start, especially with something like a novel, a lot of the people that, from what we can tell just by talking to the people who listen to Men in Gorilla Suits and the stuff I do, they're people who typically don't listen to podcasts. So a lot of the thing that we get is people who don't even have a podcatcher of any sort, they actually just go to the site, and, you know, the website and listen. And... 
knowing that there are a lot of people who are checking out what we're doing, even though I'm not really into stats with stuff that I want to do coming up, I am starting to think, okay, as podcasters, we can kind of think in a little bubble of, you know, these are podcasters, and we all kind of listen to each other's shows. I mean, I, you know, one of the things I loved about podcast movement was sitting there and listening to you, Ray. I mean, that was great, but outside of that little bubble, there are a ton of people, and even though we don't have huge numbers, it does seem that some of the people, at least a very large percentage, are people who don't normally listen to podcasts, and that's enough up here in my head to make me think, how do I expand on that with the stuff that I do want to do, because those things I will care a little bit more about the stats. Christopher, do you go to um, literary meetings and conferences and promote your podcasts with people in your niche on a local or, or maybe a national level? Um, I have not since, you know, I've only gone to a couple writing conferences, but that's a great point, Craig, because when I do talk with other writers or, you know, you go to a book festival or even chatting with somebody in a bookstore and they just ask, you know, what kind of stuff are you into and they find out I write, when I do mention it, they're really interested in it. Mm -hmm. Dave, Dave, get a consulting session with Dave. He's going he's gonna to line you up with some really cool artwork, and you're going to slide that puppy <laughs> right into the library book. And if people check it out, they know you got a podcast. Dave is the just, master just grab of the their offline phone, promotion. Just grab their phone and, sub and subscribe them on the spot. Just grab their iPhone oh. and press uh, subscribe. Do you have an iPhone? You do. Okay, hold on. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you know, I have a friend who's a really good, accomplished uh, street photographer, and he literally will just right in your face go out he'll just take the picture right you've seen this done in street photography uh, i stand off waiting for him to get punched in the face but um <laughs> somehow he pulls it off i think we're going to do that i think we're just going to start grabbing iphones subscribing people listen to this no don't do that you will be arrested <laughs> but uh so dave i'm not going to go with that approach so speaking of doing things has anyone you know, at times it can be scary to make a change. What if you get 500, 1,000 people, 10,000 people, and you think, I don't want to change anything because I don't want to lose people, right? Has anyone made a change where they saw negative or positive consequences from doing that? And what made you make a change? Even regard if it had nothing to do with stats plateauing. Tell me about a change you made to your show, why you made it, and what happened. As a result. Well, I mentioned at the beginning where I started podcasting with a co-host and that was fantastic for me yeah. because before that I just felt I was boring myself on the microphone because obviously speaking about English grammar it's not the most interesting subject in the world but when you're bouncing off a colleague who also knows knows his apples and you're kind of interacting together and you can and you can make it fun and if you're having a good time then there's a chance the listener is too. So yeah. that was a huge change change for me like a year ago. With a, yeah, with it's, a it's, interest, it's interesting because I was actually in the Facebook podcasters uh, community over there and uh, podcasting, whatever they call it, which is actually fairly active. And uh, Mike Phillips had commented on something where he said that a show that I think he was helping someone with or something had added a co-host and it made a huge difference. The show finally took off, which is an interesting mm -hmm. approach because that kind of tells you you know, I don't think it's an extra marketing effort. No, until people, the only people who know you got a new co-host are the people who either are listening or, more importantly, came to listen. So does that tell you, oh, I guess I was kind of boring. <laughs> so <laughs> they're staying now, right? But I thought that was really interesting. So anyone else done something like add a co-host? Dave, I know you probably did your live show. You brought in co-hosts. You changed the format. You brought on the people you were reviewing. And that did that help? Uh, it hasn't in both those uh, the podcast review shows. One show that both Eric and myself kind of go, and basically it's a, the, the reason it existed is people would ask me to review their show, and then I would spend literally like three hours going over it head to foot. And I kind of went, if I'm going to do that, you know, call me, you know, Satan. I, I need some money for that. That's you know, you're asking for my ten years of experience to, to comment on this. I'm going to help you avoid. So. Um, we don't have a lot of episodes because we don't have a lot of people that, that want to pay for a review. Uh, that has changed because we, we, I used to charge 20 bucks just to like, again, I just wanted somebody who was serious about it, kind of like a cover charge. Um, I had my wife on who was brutal. The hammer. Um, the hammer. 
And yeah, we changed that, and it's it's. I don't know what the stats are like. I'd have to go back and look, but I know the number of people that are lining up. It's weird because on one hand, I think I'm we're delivering a better value. You're not getting two podcast consultants for the price of one, um, but we're we're not getting people lined up to get reviewed. So, and and I don't know. You know, they're more helpful where before it was more entertaining. You know, listening to my wife going, "Oh God, this is awful. Turn it off." Um, you know, so we'll see that one. Uh, and as for the podcast review show, that was just that show was never really supposed to be a real show. I did it because I wanted to learn how to do something live, and I did. And was like, you know, the fun thing about live is, uh, you go, yeah, I'll take phone calls from the audience, and then it dawns on you, you don't have an audience. And so uh, Jim heard me struggling and said, do you want like somebody to bounce off ideas and stuff? And I'm like, hey, I've never had a co-host. Let's try that. So, uh, and I, you know, we have a fairly that's actually a show that doesn't have big – I shouldn't say it doesn't have big numbers. I guess it de, de, compared to the school of podcasting, it doesn't have big numbers. Um, but the interaction over there, I look forward to that show Saturday morning, Friday night. It's like Christmas because it's, it's spontaneous and there's a good group in the chat room, and it's not like this show. Yeah, this is this is my favorite show to do just because it's just so much fun. I mean, I admit it's pretty easy. I do think about the topics and, and get people on, and it takes a little bit of work to put every roundtable together, but it's a blast, well, so it definitely helps to enjoy your show. I think this is what inspired this session. Can you guys see my screen? It's I, the it, orange bar of death. Oh, I see. The oh, fact, there we go. Ah. This, this is one from uh, the Logical Weight oh, Loss Podcast, go. and you, that orange line is supposed to represent your average number of downloads, and for those of you listening to the audio, mine is pretty much flat as a board. Now, the bad news that you missed that is that number is right around 400. That means 400 people a day are downloading that show. Now, granted, I've got 200 and some episodes, so that's not that big a deal. But um, I think that's part of the, the fact that when we see that, we're like, oh, it's, it's not going up at all. So for the audio-only podcast listeners, this is a good reason to go over to Podcaster Roundtable and check out uh, podcaster round, podcasterroundtable.com slash 45. Check out the video because Dave showed a picture of his uh, screen-shared Libsyn stats. And explain to us again what we were seeing there. We saw spikes, we saw peaks yeah, and valleys, you, you, and an orange saw, line right through the middle. Yeah, you saw – from what I understand, this is where we need Crystal um, – the spikes are when it comes out. Like every Monday, you know, that bad boy shoots up. Right. And then it, as the days go on. Uh, but I always understood that this green area here in the and, – and if you didn't know this, if you put your mouse over the bubbles, they'll, they'll tell you how many downloads that is. And from what I understand, this orange line is kind of the, the average of the downloads for the day. Anybody got any insights on it's, that? It's the trend. The trending the trend. direction. Is it trending up, mm. trending down, trending? Slightly going up there, Dave. Fine. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's ever so slightly. I'm going from like, you know, 370 to like, you know, 390. And I'll take that if it's going and that's, up. And that's the thing, right? I mean, we're talking about, you know, stagnating or something. But in general, your podcast, it's going to grow probably slow. Um, it's probably going to grow. I, I don't see people who are putting in an honest effort and doing it on a regular basis. I don't often see it go backwards obviously it can happen but podcast growth tends to be tends to be slow and steady but it will grow so you know it's interesting about how much do you you know i guess this could be a marketing versus content question right and there's plenty of debates about that but a couple of things uh, came up in the chat that i thought were interesting and may branch us off a little bit i am curious remind me to get back before we finish here i got about 10 more minutes to sort of talk about some things that you can do that you think uh or that you have done that will make a change, right? If you have hit this plateau, maybe things to try. So mole on that, um, things you've either done or things you want to do that other podcasters can give it a shot if they're if they're concerned or they just maybe they have time and they want to to put in uh, some effort to that. And mine would actually be to go ahead and check out podcast directories that you are not currently in. And I guarantee there are some that you are not in. Something as simple as submitting an RSS feed may you know, that may be enough. There's enough audience. There's new audience on a new directory. So check out uh, podcast411.com has a good directory of podcasts and uh, podcast places, which is Daniel's, are two great places to look for new places to put your podcast. So think of something like that and we'll get back to it. Uh, Nick Suberling in the chat, he said, a majority of my audience is not subscribed. They do what Christopher does or what he said. They go to the website and click the play button. 
subscribers versus uh, people who are just playing? Do you care? Do you focus on getting subscribers? What do you focus on? Do you put that out in your show? This came up a little bit uh, with um, in the in the in G in the G plus recently, and we had some good conversation with uh, with Paul from the podcast report. But uh, yeah, I'm curious about that subscribers. You know, because could this be a case that you know? You are you have stopped growing because you're getting an occasional people are coming, they're listening and they're leaving. They're not subscribed. They're not getting that automatic delivery. What do you guys think about that? I know. I think, I'm, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Max. Uh, I was just going to say I think that the uh, the value of subscribers is sometimes overstated because uh, I think sometimes people subscribe, but that doesn't mean they listen. I subscribed to many many podcasts and. I don't listen to all of them. The listens are what are more important to me, uh, but listens are, are harder to measure. But I, I don't think subscribers necessarily means dedicated, engaged listeners. And I do think on my side, you know, having so many people listening directly from the site, at some point I think it would be good to have kind of, you know, a how to subscribe video. I think a lot of the people who listen to the things I'm doing since they don't seem to be listening to lots of podcasts, I should really be educating them and saying, hey, you know, these are some of the common ways you could subscribe if this is your thing. There's also the, uh, the idea that, you know, you can have subscribers, but if you do absolutely nothing with those subscribers, then it's pointless to begin with anyway. Like, for instance, if you have, if you have that call to action on your website saying, get into the email list and, and we'll let you know what's going on and then you never email anybody, then, uh, what, it, 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 then it's pointless. But if you actually act upon the subscriber list and use the subscriber list and, and interact with the subscriber list, I, I have a feeling that the subscribers will uh, be better and outweigh the fact of people just coming to your website and saying, sort oh, of, I'll hit the play button. Sort of two different things, though, though, because you're talking about an email list and we're talking about subscribers, right? Because you can't actually interact with your subscribers other well, than even, your show. Well, no, actually, right? you can, you can uh, interact with subscribers. I mean, you can, you can bring new... Uh, well, it really depends on what, what platform we're talking about with subscribers. Uh, yeah, you're right. With iTunes, you can't really interact with those subscribers. Um, with something like a YouTube or something like that, yes, you can interact with subscribers, and and some of these other, uh, uh, some of these Android apps that are out there, you, there are some ways to interact with those subscribers if you wanted to. Here's an example that makes me suspicious of subscribers. Uh, in in preparation for this, I went and looked at our Twitter followers for Airplane Geeks, and we have about eight times more Twitter followers than we have what I would call those listeners. It, you know, those people are not all following us. They're, they're, they're subscribed to us. They're, they follow us on Twitter. But that doesn't mean that they actually really do follow us. And I think it can be, it can be the same with subscribers. It's, it's just a, a status. Someone at one point has subscribed to something. Mm -hmm. I would argue that you know, in some cases, those, those listeners who are clicking on the web page those may be higher quality listeners than your subscribers. Well, actually, Dan Daniel, I disagree. That's, and that's the second thing, because you responded to Nick, and so tell us about that. Don't you? Yeah, um, I've been saying before, make sure your podcast is playable on your website because you'll get half of your audience coming to your website and clicking play. And surely, yes, that does happen. And yes, your podcast needs to be as accessible as visit website, click play. But... With all of the attention on Twitter bombing recently, I've really been rethinking some of the things about certain stats and realized that this visit the website, click play could be distorting our perspective of stats. I get a lot of search engine traffic to my sites and I see certain episodes, especially certain things that rank well in search engines, get a lot of plays or downloads based on Libsyn and Blueberry stats. But what that's not telling me is how much did they actually listen to? If someone goes to a website, clicks play, listens to just 10 or 15 seconds and leaves, that counts as a download. It's the same thing on YouTube, like Jeffrey was kind of referring to this earlier. You can look at YouTube and you'll see, uh, I have a video on YouTube that has 22,000 views on it, which sounds amazing. It's a fake video actually, so it's just the podcast audio over a screenshot. I didn't put it up there. 
it was a test. Someone else put it up there for me. Um, and it has 22, 24, maybe 1,000 views on it. But when you look at the audience retention, 95% of those people leave within the first 90 seconds. So that number, 22,000, looks great. But the truth is a much, much smaller number. So I'm starting to question the website plays that, yes, people click play on it, but how many of them actually listen to the full episode? But and that, should we even be counting those? That really can happen audience? from subscribers too, right? I mean, a subscriber can easily press play. We just don't know until maybe, hope, maybe, maybe Blueberry and PowerPress will come up with something that can measure that. You know, I don't know. But, I mean, if, you, if they click play and they left... You suck. Maybe it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, no, that's not always it, though. I mean, uh, there, there's a lot of people. I, I, I know people that will open up 50, 60 tabs, and then something's playing in the background. They've got the whole thing, you know, they got the audio muted or something like that and go from there. Uh, it, it, it made me think of a really funny story uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, during the Super Bowl, they had that uh, one commercial with Jeff Bridges, dreamingwithjeff.com. So, uh, and of course, Jeff, Jeff, uh, my, uh, Jennifer uh, decided, well, I'll just pull it up on my phone and, uh, and we'll see what's going on. So, you know, we're kind of lying in bed and she pulls it up and Jeff Bridges starts talking and doing some weird stuff and it's like, okay, that's fine. She clicks off of it and we don't hear anything. And then about 30 minutes later, we're just lying there and all of a sudden, Jeff Bridges' voice comes going and, and, and some flute and stuff like that and it just kind of freaked us out for two days. Her phone had Jeff Bridges coming on uh, every now and then, and and it got to the point where she's going, "Fix it, fix it for me." And it's an older an older Android phone, so it's like, "Okay, well, there's only one thing I can do, and that's turn the darn thing off, and then turn it back on, and then Jeff Bridges was gone." But uh, <laughs> a it, common it leads, story. It leads to my point that that uh, that you know somebody can click on something. Um, and they can click on play, and most of the times it's by accident because I have many people come to my web pages to see the uh, see the uh, the product that I'm that I'm reviewing or or the interview that I'm doing. They read the content, but they never hit that play button mm -hmm. uh, to to get the audio or the video content, and then they they just move on because the retention span on a web page is really not that long for most web pages. Right. And what I wanted to distinguish there with, with making a joke about how much you suck, Dave, is that, you know, the difference between Twitter bombing and someone clicking play is, you know, Twitter bombing, it's because you put a direct link to a URL and if they click the link, it opens and starts playing. This, this requires me to, you know, say, hey, ooh, look, play button, press, and listen to what's coming out of it. I mean, it doesn't, unless you have some autoplay thing going on, which you shouldn't do, and then, of course, you suck. But, you know, I think there's a difference there between someone actually taking an action of clicking play and deciding, I don't want to listen to that, right? And then someone clicking what looks like a link, which is a little trickier. I'm going to go to this link, and then it starts playing. Well, I didn't know audio was going to play. And so, yeah, I'm going to listen, and now I'm bailing because it's audio. But yeah. if you go to my website, you press play on a play button, and you pretty much know what you're going to get. Like that doesn't leave. mean that they stick around, though, and consume No, it. no, I'm, but I'm saying it's different. It's that, right. That's a conscious effort as opposed to Twitter bombing. Where yeah, it's exactly, just right. So it is far more reliable than Twitter bombing. But I'm, I was saying that thinking about Twitter bombing made me start thinking about, well, how much can we really count web plays? And yeah, you could say how much can we really count subscriptions, but I think you can assume a bit more on a subscriber especially after, if you're a weekly show, after about five weeks, because the way that iTunes and Stitcher work is that if someone doesn't play an episode or mark it as played, which most people don't know how to do that, except Nick Suberling, if they don't mark it as played or play it for five releases from your show, then it pauses their subscription. So if you see your stats go down after five weeks, then it could be that people are not listening to the episodes. And that's when you can understand your audience a bit better. But I think the subscription numbers, like if you look at your user agent information in Libsyn and you look at iTunes Core Media and Stitcher, or if you look at your uh, distribution section of Blueberry and look at the mobile applications and the podcatchers, I think that shows a much more accurate picture of how large your audience is. Cool. Well, 
I'll, I'll get off the subscribers. There's, it's probably a whole roundtable. Maybe we can get Paul on here because uh, I had fun going back and forth with him on that one. But um, let's circle back to hopefully have something. Okay, so a listener, a podcast, uh, a podcaster who's listening to the roundtable has noticed their stats has leveled off, and they actually do have time to give a little more. The content is killer. Like, they don't really I, – I get that's hard to judge too, right? Is like, well, how do I know if my content could be better? <laughs> let's let's give them the benefit of the doubt and say their the content is solid, unlike Dave's. And what should they do to then go ahead and uh, give them something they can do to maybe increase their numbers? Is there something you've tried? And for me, like I said, I simply submitting – because this doesn't require you to, to, you know, to take a bunch of time every day and uh, post a thousand tweets – it's just submitting RSS to a new directory where there are people and they can find you. Um, I think that would work and that would grow your show a little bit. doesn't mean you'll get a massive spike. But there are interesting uh, situations like, Daniel, I think you said you got featured on Stitcher and you saw a big spike. Now, whether those people turned into uh, the real listeners, certainly you retain some of them and you accomplished and, and the goal has been reached, right? I found a few more people who want to listen to the show. So, Christopher... Um, yeah, any, any tips like that for people who have made it all the way through this round table and they're like, please give me something to chew on here and take back to my show. I could really only go by some of the stuff that I'm thinking about. Yeah, perfect. Some of the stuff that we do is kind of geeky and I got to start in comic books. That was the first paid writing I was ever paid to do. I haven't been to a comic book convention in ever and it would be kind of fun just to see as a podcaster and also the guy I do the show with also writes, sell ebooks and promote the show at a comic book convention, or just think of different places based on what it is you're doing that you could kind of reach again outside that bubble. Yeah, so IRL, right? In real life, get out there, make contacts, have fun, enjoy the people who yes. are in your niche, and, and you'll pick up a few people here and there. And uh, who knows? Who knows what can happen? So that's cool. Craig? I'd, I'd prefer uh, the listener to, to round table round 30, grow your audience, all those tips in there to, uh, to increase the audience. There's one thing I'm working on at the moment. It's kind of a, a trailer of the best bits of certain podcasts that wouldn't be longer than, say, a minute, and then um, put that out on social media so that people can get a taste of what the best bits of your episode to try and hook them in and get them uh, subscribing. Yeah, that's a good one. I actually have a quote here from, I think it came from that feed uh, from the question that uh, Jeffrey posted. And let me see, it says, uh, oh yeah, it was from Salvador Brigham, I think is how you would say it. He says he's only on his 14th episode, but one thing he's doing is trying to set up a, a course plan so that if you were listening to his podcast for the first time, he recommends checking out episodes blank and blank, 50, 51, whatever it is. Uh, he realized only recently that people don't know which episodes might be relevant or not relevant to them. So, you know, I think that, you know, highlighting, hey, if you're new, here's the content, you know, that might hook you or the most important content to get started with this show. I think that might be very cool. I recently made a YouTube trailer and that's one of the things you can do for YouTube. And it's to say, what the heck is this channel about, right? People might find you and they might find a random video but what really is on your channel? And that's that's what the trailer was there for. So, you know, that is an interesting way to approach it. I think that that's probably helpful for a new listener. And I'm sure we've talked about on around before, um, how much stuff do you put up front that sort of says, this is what this podcast is about, right? So the new person, we're always, we always cater a little bit to the new listener. And that obviously is a personal decision about how much you want to do, um, which I'm curious to ask everybody, but I won't go there. But <laughs> um, how much, you know, I guess it probably the advice there, Dave, is what, like a tagline to sort of say, here's an overview of what this show is going to, what we do with this show, right? Yeah, something I, I've been seeing a lot of people, I don't know a lot, but I'm seeing it more and more is a tab on your website that says start here. Mm -hmm. Like if you just get here, and I, when I was thinking about that, I'm like, you know what, I need to start here. Yeah. And it's like, the show is about this, we cover this, um, click here to listen, click here to subscribe. Don't know how to subscribe? Uh, if you don't know, if you want to take a screenshot of your iPhone, hold down the power button and press, or the whatever, what's this button called? The little home button. The, the home button and the, the top power button, and you can take a screenshot and then email it to yourself. Um, and you can easily make a tutorial on your website on how to subscribe to your your podcast and throw that on a page. Um, you know, there's all sorts of uh, things like that. 
Yeah, something I realized I need to do, and I think I realize oftentimes uh, new things to do when I go to, when I am actually in sort of um, try to gather, I'm in information gathering mode where I, maybe I find a new podcast or I hear about a person and I go to their website and I'm like, ah, well, I, don't, I don't know what this is about. There's an about page. I wanted to put just right there in the, in the banner on every page one sentence that tells you, you know, even if it seems obvious to you, it'd be nice to have a description that says Daniel's like thumbs up all over the place. That's that you like that. Oh yeah. Because people will land on your site through various pages and it won't always be your homepage. Yes. Your homepage and your about page are very popular, but especially if you're doing any kind of search engine optimization, people might be landing on an individual page and that page needs to give in some way the gist of what your overall content is about. Please don't make it a pop-up box. Uh, I get it. More people are subscribing to you technically, but you're just making me annoyed. Uh, That's a personal preference as well. So, uh, Daniel, any other any tips for podcasters who have who've plateaued and want to sort of break through that? Yeah, if you're already doing content very well, I would suggest do more content. And this doesn't mean necessarily that you have to do more work, but it could be segmenting your content a little bit. I for a little while, and I'm getting back to this very soon, but for a little while, I was publishing videos on YouTube and a blog post on my website with the Audacity to Podcast in addition to the weekly audio episode. And when I was doing that, I did see a definite increase in my audience, increase in people coming to my website, increase in views, legitimate views on YouTube and new subscriptions. It was really helping to put out more content, especially reaching into different platforms where, although I'm primarily an audio podcast, blogging more and writing to my email newsletter more and posting short videos more, that kind of thing can really help you reach a new audience, especially if it's something like posting videos to YouTube. That's a completely different audience than a podcast audience. But what I'm planning to do now that I've finished a production of SEO for podcasters course, which took me away from a lot of this other bonus content creation. What I'm planning to do is get back into the regular blogging and video posting, but in my videos, especially on YouTube, put a stronger call to action to subscribe to the podcast and visit the podcast website. And I want to see how does that then affect the rest of my stats. Better put it in the first 10 seconds. Yeah, I probably should. So, so is that like the old Leo Laporte, uh, if, you're, if you're podcasting, you're video podcasting, if you're video podcasting, you're blogging, and if you're blogging, you're podcasting? Basically, yeah, doing everything, the trifecta. And we've heard the stat, right? That I mean, I think Todd Cochran has said that, you know, you can grow this much faster if you add another, another content creation element, like blogging. If you podcast, uh, then you should blog, and blog is you can do video. So the more you add, typically, we've heard at least the stat that it will increase your growth faster. So it seems to have worked in your case. And that can be difficult to do, but if you do have the time, to put that in, it may be worth trying another sort of, you know, I don't know what you call it, a funnel, what do you, another form of content creation. Start blogging. Well, and you know, uh, really quickly about the time, it doesn't have to take as much time as the rest of your content. That extra stuff you do could be something much, much shorter, like two paragraphs in a blog post or a one minute video. And that could be extremely effective for you. Yeah. I mean, tweet your direct URL like every hour. It doesn't take <laughs> no, much every time. minute. Every, every minute. minute. Sorry. That's Twitter bombing people. I'm a little over it. I don't, I don't give those people any cred anyways. Anyways, we won't go there. Dave, we need a tip, buddy. A tip? Um, you had all this time. I know. I kind of gave mine. I, I was talking about uh, making a tutorial. Um, yeah, that's it. I got nothing. That's I all right. mine. Reinstate the. Give me the tutorial tip again. What well, real brief? Just, well, the fact that you can you can take a screenshot of an iPhone. Uh, I'm not sure how you do it on an Android. You could easily make a tutorial on how to subscribe to your podcast. You're saying someone should take a picture and then post it on like a blog. Well, they could say, like "Here's how you do it." You know, here's like take a screenshot. Here's the app, right? The little purple gizmo, and then click on it and say, "Click here to search." Gotcha. And then type in your name and just, you know, step by step by you step. You can embed the Ira Glass video that shows you how to just go to the website and press play. Exactly. Of course, you then you got a bogus send play. Send people learn to subscribe.com. That's why I'm, I'm hoping to redo that video. Uh, learn to subscribe.com. That was, that's yours? One of your That many? is mine, and it's, it's so old, the video is in Flash. Oh, right. So <laughs> no one's learning anything. 
Yeah, Dave, so I, I, borrowed, I borrowed one of your ideas uh, about a week ago. Uh, was it was it you a few years ago? You used to leave cards at petrol yeah, at gas yeah. stations. Absolutely. Yes, I, I burned. I burned. I gave a, a presentation at my school, and I burned some of my podcasts on a CD. And yeah. at the end of the presentation, as the teachers were leaving, I just goes, "Hey, listen to this. You know, let, play it for your students." And as they were going out, they were getting a hard copy, and they actually did. So you can start at a local level. And you can raise awareness of podcasting to people who don't know about it. I love yeah, to do I, that at talks. I just I fling CDs out here, Luddites, and I fling <laughs> them out through the. No, yeah, that's great. Little... Introduce people who, like you said, we talked about people who aren't listening. You know, uh, Christopher, your audience, not primarily a podcasting listening audience. So give them, give them the, uh, be the dealer, right? Your first one's free. Here you go. Yeah, and another <laughs> quick thing that we've done is we'll take like a minute from the show. And I'll just go to like morgfile.com, find some images that kind of focus on what it is we're talking about, throw the video up on YouTube just with these images. It's a minute long. I can say, hey, check it out. This is kind of what's happening. And when we've done that, we've actually seen, you know, that's one of the few times I've checked stats where it's like, I'm going to talk about 30 jobs I've had in one minute, and boom, and there's just these images, and people love it. 30 jobs you've had. That's actually now well, I've had I've had a lot more than that, actually. <laughs> but awesome. <laughs> we, you can also do things to, to... This was a tip that I just did just because, I you know, it's kind of the same old show. And so at the end of the show, I, I changed my exit music. That was the first thing. And now I have it where halfway through the exit music, it, it sounds like the record went dead. And then if I have any bloopers, hello, there's always bloopers. I play the bloopers, and then I have the music. Sim and I had more people say, that is so much fun. Please don't, because I, I quit doing the bloopers. So it's interesting because, A, I find out who listened to the end of the show, and it was just something goofy to do that was like, all right, here, let's do something. I mean, one of the things of Howard Stern was, you know, you never knew what you're going to get. So without changing the format, without completely messing up the show, I did something just to make it a little different. So people were like, oh, well, it's not the same, exactly the same old, same old. Yeah, I think that works well with ads, right? If if mm -hmm. if I if it's if the ad is, can be compelling, you know, we always hear about we're hearing about serial and startup and everything. But in the beginning, the the um, startup stuff was really good because it was just a story about the company. Right. And you wouldn't, I wouldn't hit the thirty second skip. I would listen. So it is nice to change it up. If people can anticipate what's coming, then they they tend to, to go past it. But anyways, Jeffrey, right. we have a we have a tip for us on the going out here. Um, yeah, uh, well, basically, uh, and, and I can't remember who I was just talking about with, uh, but it, 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 if you have, there's, and, and everybody's probably come across this, because, uh, you know, we go out to these conferences, and people come up to you and they say, oh, I've, I've been meaning to listen to your show, I really have been, and uh, if, if, if you've got their information, you know, sometimes try and reach out to them, make it, make it more of a personal uh a personal invite to come check out the show because they might turn around and get on their Twitter feeds and say, yeah, just listen to the show. It's great. You should listen to it. And next thing you know, you've got a whole bunch of new people that are involved and uh, and moving around and, and listening to your to your content. Um, and, you know, like I said, we go to, we go to many conferences. Uh, so, you know, it, it's it's a game of numbers in different areas. So if I, I have 50 people listening in California, I have 50 people listening in in New York, I have 50 people listening in Florida, which I probably wouldn't have gotten if I didn't go to those places. Um, and just uh, just being able to communicate there. Now a lot of people they might not have the money or time to fly to California to find 50 people to listen to your podcast. Um, but you know that's where Things like Reddit and and uh, other places that can really uh, come in, and you can you can find people in different areas, and then get to know them and talking to them. And if they listen to your podcast, that's great. If they don't listen to your podcast, that's great too. You're getting you're getting a friend over everything else. Yeah, I like the personal touch because, as we know, word of mouth is oftentimes the most powerful way to spread your podcast, right? So yeah. taking that that time to interact with actual one of your listeners. You know, or someone who has shown interest may actually get you much further than any tweet or Facebook post or anything else you're going to do. And I like to participate in um, Twitter hashtag like events that I'm interested in, and I just add to the conversation. And people naturally say, "Oh, dude, that was a that was a f cool thing you said," and we just start talking, and then it naturally spawns off. 
I mean, click the Twitter profile. It shows you that I have a podcast. And you know, stuff grows organically that way. So I like both those things. Definitely go out mm-hmm. and try to make more contact. And Dave, you kind of allude to that as well uh, with your audience. And that's probably going to go a lot further than a lot of other you know, marketing methods. So go figure, right? Getting personal actually is a good thing for you your podcast and probably just for friendships. That's this show is awesome. I get a new friend like every time. So that's really cool. And Dave usually gets someone new to bring on his show. So (laughs) all right, Max. Yeah, I've got something that uh, worked really well for us. And that is don't be so provincial. Americans are particularly prone to that. Look, there's a, you know, there's a whole big world out there with a lot of potential listeners who may be interested in your topic. So what one thing that worked well for us is we basically created some foreign correspondents. It, these were people who were listeners who kept sending us content about what was going on in aviation, in our case, in, in their region, and we would talk about those things. And, and finally we said, well, why, why don't you talk about those things? You live there. Make us a recording, a little five-minute recording. We'll make that a segment. And so uh, we, we now have segments that are covering our topic in, in Europe, in the UK, and in Australia. And our international audience is now 40% of our total audience. So uh, that was, uh, I thought, a great example of kind of looking beyond you know, your region, your, your local views, trying to find content that has broader appeal worldwide and incorporate that somewhere or other in your show. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. And that might be a, something cool. I haven't really thought of that. So there's a new idea for you. And yes, you did hear right. The guy who does Airplane Geeks podcast is named Max Flight. It's true. It's his real name. I've asked. And uh, he claims it is. So I think it's just branding. But no, I'm kidding. It is his name. So very cool. I like that foreign correspondence. I think that internationally, we have such, you know, we talk about potential and growing audience and how many people live in the U.S. and stuff like that. But international has such a large potential um, of new people. And, um, uh, you know, it really does. And especially if you speak, I mean, I mean, speaking English, I mean, just so many people who are more talented than me and they live in another country like Spain and they speak English and Spanish. So you are open, you know, whereas, you know, us Americans, we speak one language and I'm not gonna listen. I can't listen to Spanish podcasts. I'm overgeneralizing. That's not true. Most of you are more talented than me in speaking our language. Despite my last name, I know it's disgraceful. <laughs> it is. I know it's, it's Ortega. Terrible. I have people come on the show say my last name better than me. Fred Castaneda would we'll slaughter that. So, anyways, <laughs> yeah, I'll get past that. But all right, so cool. We've definitely uh, overstayed our welcome. I've, I've overstayed your welcome and. and keeping you here. So thanks so much. As we go out real quick, of course, I want to give you a chance to, to plug. So, but one website, we got to hurry up. We're overdue. So one website, uh, we'll work it back the other way. Uh, Max flight. Thanks for joining us on another round table. Yeah, my pleasure. You can find uh, all of the things that I do that our co-hosts do and contributors at airplanegeeks.net. Yeah, thank you. And it's true. See airplane podcast, Max flight, go check it out. He must know what he's talking about. <laughs> Jeffrey Powers, welcome back. Thanks for joining us again, and uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. My one question is, is it you, Daniel, or David, if they were to leave, if the numbers were to drop? Oh, it's Dave. <laughs> People okay. are here for Dave. Okay. That's right. I yeah. tease Dave. The more I tease you, the more crucial you are to my relationship <laughs> in my life. So I give Dave the hardest time, so Dave can't leave. All right. Well, uh, since I'm, I'm in podcast coach mode, you can find me over at How to Record podcasts and the new show podcast hacks awesome thanks again and dave before mentioned i think i've just plugged you enough buddy but that's okay give us our website and thanks again school of podcasting.com use the coupon code sop 2015 at new media expo that's two uh, we'll let him slip he is the director of podcasting at nmx 15 this year we'll let him get a little extra promo yeah definitely check it out you got to come out to nmx meet let's see uh, Jeff, for you, Jeffrey, you'll probably be there. Dave, you'll be yep. there. Daniel, you'll be there. I'll be there. Uh, I don't, oh, Craig, you're coming over for that? First, yep, oh, first man. time. Uh, first time. That is awesome. That's right. amazing. First, first time in Vegas and first time meeting you guys. I'm uh, really, really, really uh, excited about it. We may not see you again. Then We've my seen wife, that happen before. My wife is not so excited, but I'm really up for it. <laughs> well, make sure you get in touch. we got to hang out. I wanna, okay, hopefully, cool. hey, if you're listening to the roundtable, especially if you made it this far, you're like a power listener. We have to hook up at, at NMX if you're going to be there. Um, you know, I, I feel bad if you can't make it there, but if you can, maybe Podcast Movement will be there. Wherever we are, please let us know. 
because we can hang out. You know, even if it's just a minute in the hallway or we can go have dinner, something. Something's going to happen. We'll be hanging out. So that'll be exciting. And all the way from Spain. Wow. Good job. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Dave, thanks again. Co -host, sexy co-hosting duties there. Great job, buddy. Silky smooth voice. I enjoyed it very much. Salute. We're out of here. Daniel, thanks again for also co-hosting the roundtable. Thank Don't you. Forget, Chris. <laughs> All of my podcasts and stuff for podcasters is at theaudacitytopodcast.com. Awesome. So short and sweet. And Craig, we just heard you're, you're joining us, so that's yeah, very cool. But thanks for – what time is it there in Spain? It's like nearly 3 o'clock in the morning, but I'm, I'm buzzed. So it's been such a, <laughs> such a great experience meeting you guys, and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. If anybody out there listening speaks Spanish and wants to improve their English or knows somebody whose surname is Ortega – they can find us at uh, englishpodcast.com or our main website at mansionengles.com. Awesome. You were so pumped up there. I hope I didn't wake up the wife because, again, I do not want to be in trouble. But thanks again for being a new roundtabler and can't wait to meet you at NMX. Thanks again. It's been a pleasure. Christopher, take us out of here, man. Thanks for joining us. First time roundtabler. Well, thank you for having me. It's been a blast. I've watched and listened to a lot of everybody's shows here. And if you want to see what I'm up to, it's a weekly show called meningorillasuits.com. Awesome. I love that name. I'm going to check it out just for the name. It sounds funny. All right, you guys. That's it. Podcasters Roundtable 45 is a wrap, and we will see you in the next round. And um, until then, wave bye, everybody. Thanks, everyone.